Um, we'll start with our first speaker here, uh, Dr. Sengu Kim, with the title Neural Encoding of Phonemes Modulated by Linguistic Information. Dr. Kim is a postdoc at the Department of Psychology and Neuroscience at Duke University. Um, just to remind you, let me just a second share my screen for one second. Um, Sorry, okay, I don't find it now. Um, so um, you are welcome to ask questions uh, in the chat box. I will read it out loud once uh, the talk is over. Okay, Dr. Kim, you can start. All right. So, okay. Mm. Right. Uh, thank you for the introduction. So uh, today my talk is about the encoding of phonemes. Uh, and this work is being done in collaboration with Federico Di Martino from University of Maastricht and also my PI, uh, Tobias Abras. And this work is still in progress, but I'd like to share some uh, interim results with you and get some nice feedback. All right. So our group has been working on the temporal processing of speech as it is crucial in transforming acoustic information to linguistic information. And previously we used a dedicated scrambling algorithm to control the temporal extent of speech structure in which the sequence of segment is selected so that the transition between segments would be similar in the scrambled and the original speech in terms of cochreogram representation. So this process uh, minimized the acoustic artifacts from scrambling while disrupting the temporal structure of speech. So using this uh, kill chain reason, we presented speech stimuli with varying intact uh, temporal extent. And we found that the bold activation in the bilateral spur temporal supply increased as a function of segment length. And in a subsequent study, we also observed that the left inferior frontal gyrus also showed a uh, quite similar uh, response curve only for a familiar language, which was English, and but not for an unfamiliar language, which was Korean. Right. And recently, the encoding of natural speech in ephemeral time series was demonstrated. Uh, so this motivated us to uh, investigate how the temporal and linguistic context effects that we previously found would modulate such an encoding of speech in ephemeral data. To address this question, we used the same bilingual, so Korean and English uh, stimuli from the previous study in a two by two factorial design. So two levels of language, English and Korean, and two levels of uh, quilting or temporal extent. So the original speech and then very short a phoneme quilt. Here I have an example for English phoneme. And this is Korean phoneme. So you might have recognized some English phonemes, but the temporal structures are clearly uh, disrupted. So using this stimuli, we acquired multiband API data at 3T from 10 native English speakers without any knowledge in Korean with a small test to maintain their attention level. And we repeated three sessions of eight rounds resulting in 205 minutes of my data per subject. Uh, and we perform a linearized encoding analysis, which combine the FIR modeling and rich regression. So in the FIR modeling, uh, you estimate the both signal from the current and the previous uh, features from the current and previous time point. And the features were enveloped and four different phoneme classes based on the manner of articulation. And for rich regression, we used a rich trace method to optimize the regularization. 
and the model was validated over two folds. Right. And then to infer the significance of its individual feature or condition, we used a model comparison. Uh, that is, we create a different null models which lacks some of features or condition and compare the prediction accuracy, which were measured by Pearson correlation. And then the significance was inferred at the group level using a cluster-based permutation test. And here I'll highlight uh, these three comparisons that were most relevant to the main focus of our study. So the first one, the effect of phonemes. So we compare the prediction accuracy of a model where you have uh, four phoneme classes and one envelope feature and another model with only envelope feature. And then the question was whether addition of phonetic features would increase the prediction accuracy. So these were individual uh, pure correlation differences across different subjects. And this was a group level t statistic map. We found increase of prediction accuracy in the left STS, uh, so it, which indicates the encoding of phonemes in this area. And we also found decreased prediction accuracy in around hashes of service and time temporarily, bilaterally, uh, which is suggests the phonemes were not informative in this area, but the envelope that was actually informative was uh, penalized together with the phoneme, so it reduced the uh, prediction accuracy. And then for the effect of uh, temporal context, we compare the full model where we predict each condition separately. So for English phoneme, original, Korean phoneme, and Korean original. And then with an, a reduced model where you don't, uh, or you pull the original speech and the phoneme quotes together. So there is only a distinction for the language. And then having different predictors for different language improved the prediction accuracy in the left STS again, and also decreased the prediction accuracy in the hash of service and plant temporal. So this suggests that in the left STS, the speech was differently encoded in the original speech than the phoneme quilt. And so this is the effect of linguistic context so we compare the full model again. And this time the reduced model was uh, pulling English and Korean together. So there was only distinction between the original uh, speech and the phoneme quill. And we also found a similar effect. So the speech was differently encoded between languages in the left STS. Uh, so here, white outlines mark the p-value less than 5%. Uh, and it wasn't in the hashes of the implant temporal. So to summarize, we found uh, that rapid features of speech were encoded in the ephemeral time series. In particular, the acoustic features, feature was encoded in the primary and surrounding auditory cortices, whereas the phonetic features were encoded in the left temporal circus. Interestingly, the encoding of speech was modulated by temporal and linguistic context in the uh, left STS at group level. And we expect uh, to find more interesting effects at the individual level, such as an interaction between context and the interfrontal gyrus in, with some different lateralization across the subject. And the decoding analysis may result in additional insight on the spatial temporal pattern of the neural responses. I'd like to thank the collaborators again, and I also acknowledge the funding source from the NIH, and thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kim, for your wonderful talk. Um, before um, we'll ask, uh, while we're waiting for questions, uh, we didn't hear the, hear the demo, unfortunately. Could you um, reshare or share the audio and then try again to play these demos? All right.
Let me try that again. So can you hear this uh, clicking sound? Okay. So this was the all right, so this was the English morning quilt. Right. And then now this is the Korean morning quilt. Okay. Okay. Of the uh, streams that you just uh, played, or, or okay. yeah, so we are kind of considering a decoding analysis, uh, probably uh, differentiating four different conditions uh, would be first, and also uh, we are thinking whether it would be possible at more a fine time scale, but I mean. To begin with, probably we might try to uh, differentiate uh, for a different condition or different language or different uh, temporal extent from the global signal. And yeah, probably, I don't know. I mean, so we expect to uh, find also similar distinctions. So this uh, language or uh, temporal extent to be informative, would be informative in the left STS and some other uh, higher order area, but not in the primary uh, auditory cortex. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's our current expectation. Okay, thank you very much. And um, we're moving to the next speaker.